Hello there everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of which we are playing in TNO, the Iberian Union, but we gotta talk about the situation in Goa, even though right now we currently still don't have a focus tree, unfortunately. Which does, or at least one that works. But, uh, with the establishment of the Iberian Council, order is being restored to the peninsula, freeing up the government to work on other pressing matters. It's past due that Iberia set its sight on the rest of the world, and the first steps of the process will be the coastal city of Goa. Formerly a Portuguese colony, the port of Goa was seized by India shortly after the conclusion of the Second World War. Near the turn of the decade, in tandem with the annexation of Angola and Mozambique by Germany, the garrison had already been substantially reduced, moved to the Portuguese colonies in Africa to defend them from German attacks. Reportedly, not a single shot was fired in defense in or in assault of the port city. With the garrison simply discerning and withdrawing from the port, allowing the Indian forces to move in and capture the colony entirely unopposed. The nature of the Goa incident, however, raised quite a few doubts within the general staff, some of whom believed that there was more to do to the incident than the well being of the troops. There are two reasonable conclusions. According to our general staff, the attack was in whole an Indian aggression. Taking land which did not belong to them and against such numbers, how could they already minimize Gerson and help to resist them? After all, the Gerson was outnumbered and unequipped. Defeating the hands of the superior Indian forces was inevitable. A second conclusion, though, carries far more ominous implications. That some unknown factor motivated the Gerson commander to order our forces to stand down, surrounding our territories and go without so much as a protest. Bombay. Uh, Vasco da Gama. It's a fault here. And he's clearly the culprit. Um, I bear demands compensation for the go takeover. Interrogating the garrison commander. Let's go with that one. That sounds like a more reasonable offer as a uh, civil war is fired off now. Now, honestly, I'm just going to let New Granada win because I want to see what it could be like. In a successful Iberian state, or su successful-ish Siberian, Siberian, Iberian, um, you know, thing here. But, uh, yeah, we're just gonna wait for the focus tree to pop up, hopefully. I reloaded the save quite a few times, but I guess now we're in June, and I wanna see what the next event is with India, but... I India refuses to pay, so there we go. What insolence. India's refused to compensate their aggression, claiming it was not really aggression. Effectively, we lost every last escudo Portugal has to place in the port. Clearly, the only option remaining is to remind them the consequences of flippantly rejecting our offer to resolve the problem peacefully. Although perhaps we may be yet able to strike a deal, regardless, we must compose a response post haste. I simply cannot allow such a response to go and answer. What would it be? The go to take over the active war, so be careful. How about a symbolic payment? Blackmails us. Let's go with a symbolic payment to see what happens. You know, we'll give them an easy way out. Failed military coup in Ecuador. Uh, so that group died. The communists are doing okay, though, right now. The vanishing arms. Uh, current and interesting phenomena have been reported in the province of uh, Barcelona. Apparently, several Italian arms shipments have gone missing in the state owned warehouses near the wharf. Due to the fact that the arms were earmarked for the Federal Army, which is rather shoddily equipped in the sector, getting to the bottom of this supply leak is of utmost importance. Several ideas have been noticed and could be pursued, including access records to the secure area of the warehouse, the guard shifts, and if worse comes to worse, some worrying accounts of separate activity in the area. As this is Catalonia, it's very possible that nearly any force could be involved. Additionally, due to the lack of damage in the buildings or storage areas, it's very possible that the force causing the arms disappearances has one or more men on the inside. While this is hopefully not the case, it could be best to keep the investigation quiet in order to make sure that no one, nothing leaks. Investigate this immediately. Do we have any options about that? Maybe? No? Just no? Okay. Fool's mate. The two Cadillos uh, have prepared the board. their board. Salazar given the choice after for the black. Franco was playing Hawaii. Salazar was quite capable of chess, although he only bragged a little about it. And Franco had just enough, uh, just enough experience to not need an explanation on the basic functions of the game. With everyone prepared, the Cadillos began the game. The quiet of the office they had prepared, besides the ticking of a plain clock, provided effective for facilitating the contemplation of moves. Franco moved his first piece at three. Chess was lacking without ample conversation. If this is anything to go by, e5. You would be correct, began Salazar. If you cannot rem reminisce, the game loses some of its appeal. G4. For a new order, it doesn't seem all that orderly. Do you think the Germans ever put that much thought into what came after the war? QH4. No, no, I don't. Anyway, this is checkmate. Franco looked at the board again. No matter where he looked, Salazar was right. There was nowhere to move. You'll need to practice if you want to beat me. If only I could veto your moves, Antonio. Antonio. Hey, that's looking a lot better now. Wow, what happened there? India stands its ground. India insisted it would not provide us any compensation for the port of Goa. Given our position, we, are, we lack the ability to do anything else about it. If black mode didn't work, nothing will. Our plans have also failed. Our port is lost, which of all our investments are also lost. The only thing we can do now is swallow our pride and admit defeat. We, only, we need to salvage what we can and bury these negotiations. If we can't, then our government will be rendered laughing socks in the eyes of the public once more. I'll cut this before the press gets a hold on it. Well, I mean, that's complete crap, because we, we're trying to be nice to them and whatnot, but... That's, that's looking a lot better. Holy crap. Why is it looking better? Oh, I don't know why. It's because I deleted the Navy as many of you We didn't fail here at all. We have the Goa Forum. The diplomat paid little attention to the crowd assembled before him. Concerned more with speaking every word of his extensive notes. The purpose of their speech was clear. Iberia would be compensated in full for the Indian actions in Goa. Following his few seconds of quiet, the Iberian delegation spoke up, beginning with a quiet O. Oh. They started or stated to, these pres to those present that, in a gesture of goodwill, Iberia wished to reinvest this payment back into Indian industries for the benefit of us both. 
This announcement was met with a considerable buzz from those present. After the murmuring died down, the Iberian delegate and Indian delegate came together to shake hands, smiling for the cameras. Despite a few issues regarding timing, we were planning to play off all India's alternative investment scheme as a spontaneous occurrence. There are already a considerable number of Indian businesses lobbying and competing for a time in investment. They don't know it, but we'll select one line at random. It's not the best case scenario for direct compensation. On the bright side, we can most likely make up for our losses over the course of time. A great victory. Nice. And it makes reformism strong in the council. Awesome. But arms achievements were missing. Despite the best efforts of the AAS, it seems that the leads present were all dead. And through a questioning of the warehouse guards, returned nothing but reports of strange noises in the night, which are fairly typical for posting in a large city. Background checks also failed to reveal anything of note. The Guardia's uh, civil officers charged with guarding the area are apparently entirely loyal, with no history of corruption at all. The access records are also useless. That's simply no way for anyone to remove crates of guns and anti-tank mun munitions without being detected by outside forces. Whatever's going on here is clearly a legal matter for the local police or a simple bureaucratic error. Thus, it is uh, best to either kick that, the issue down to locals or drop it, and thus instead focus on preventing anonymous situations like this from happening again. Be through a greater security or bureaucratic reform. Send this down the chain of command to the police. Send to the police. It's probably bureaucratic order or error. No, so we're focusing on the investigation. With the fear of the AAS to find anything at all, at all on the investigation of the missing arm shipments, the control efforts have been handed down to the local police department. Well, they're not necessarily expected to find anything. Uh, given the devilishly tricky means that we were undoubtedly used to seize the arm shipments, it's possible that the locals could pick up on some sort of subtle tip that the federal allies were not able to detect. The AAS has mostly pulled out from the city, leaving behind only token force at its regional headquarters, or around former Union Hall. They are all prepared. They are prepared to support the locals if a lead is picked up, but we are otherwise standing down for the time being. Hopefully they can find anything we missed. So we end up with getting 50 more political power knives. Deposing an Uruguay. What the heck is going down here? Situation into more. Through another violent affair out through the Pacific, uh, the Japanese managed to capture all sorts of people and territory. Most importantly, they seized a former Portuguese colony in Timor. In the face of overwhelming odds, the garrison yielded. Soldiers and officers alike promptly imprisoned. We've yet to get word back from any of them. While we're covering the colony, it is an impossibility. It is far more possible to cover those guarding the port from their incarceration. These brave soldiers have been held prisoner for nearly two decades. It is simply untenable to allow them to remain prisoners any longer. We must liberate them immediately. Currently held in Indonesia, it should be a simple fair to petition the Indonesian government to allow them to come home and release their prisoners. And local police pick up a leave. The Barcelona and police have been hard at work these past few days investigating numerous trails across the city, occasionally resulting in the shadow showdowns between officers and CNT rebels. Well, these conflicts weren't ideal thanks to them, so if confirmed CNT members have been kind, the information forced out of them. Thankfully, this information appears to be the truth, as it already led to multiple arrests. Due to the similarities of these events, the police force has been able to narrow down their search regions into something more manageable than before, and is all but assured that within a few days, they will have enough information to conduct a full raid on where they believe that arms are stored. After them. After them. After them. I might have done to tax hike too. Helps to uh, push us down a little bit further. For now as well. You know, it sucks. The police attempt to seize the arm shipments. After pinpointing the location of the stolen arms in an abandoned warehouse, the Barcelonian uh, police mobilized a large number of officers for an all-out raid. With the guns loaded, vehicles fueled, fueled and sides set, the police moved out of their predetermined time late at night. Soon after departing, the plan immediately began to fall apart. All across the city, people were about, breaking carefully and causing chaos in the streets. Officers were held up at blockades, with many being forced to reverse and find another path to the warehouse. Some not as lucky, with many citizens acting in open revolt, attacking the officers, injuring five and killing one. As in, I continue, the exact amount of civilian casualties has not been accounted for. Few officers successfully arrived at the warehouse at their predetermined time, and upon arriving, they immediately realized what had happened. Before they could get away, however, CNT rebels opened fire on their cars, and the result, the rest of the night is history. Those officers were never seen again. No tolerance for criminal scum, and Indonesia gave us a runaround. Over the past few days, Indonesia has been both slow to respond and unhelpful to when they do. What we managed to eke out of them is that they can't release their prisoners for some reason or another. The diplomatic roundabout is very getting, getting very tiring, so the pattern of waiting a day or, t or for a few more words is to him. This time we're going to send them a response that they'll have no chance of wiggling out of. We'll leave no loopholes, no flaws in the wording. We're going to find out what's holding up our prison, in prison garrison this time. What's the issue and what's the deal? Oh. Obergang zur Gerung im Polen. Shroud CNT so seizes control of Barcelona. Oh, look at this. After outmaneuvering the Barcelona police and securing a major, major victory, the CNT FAI moved on with the next phase of their plan. Look at this guy. With nobody to oppose them, they, uh, they fully seized control of the city, assaulting what few loyal officers remain in the city. As an added negative, uh, they also see the officers' equipment adding to their arsenal. Out of equipment, morale in town, the free officers realized that this was not something they can control anymore and we needed military assistance if Barcelona is going to be recaptured. Uh, we have a few options on how to best deal with this, as performing an old-fashioned siege with artillery or bombing the city from the sea. The other solution, one which is likely to succeed but ultimately be detrimental to the city, is to mobilize our tanks and take the city by force without letting them prepare for a siege. The choice is ours, we need to decide quickly. Artillery. Naval bombardment.
Pyrrhic victory in Barcelona. A brutal naval bombardment shattered any resistance from the bar partisan forces of the CNT FAI. Unfortunately, uh, the rest of the city was also swiftly devastated by the might of the Iberian Navy, as the nature of our ship's guns made any sort of in accuracy infeasible. Thus, a, a hail of shells ravaged the civilian buildings and left fortifications with equal fury. Total captures have been estimated to be nearly 4,000, with so many civilians included. But this number may prove significantly higher as more bodies are discovered, of course. National and international observers alike have watched this with shock of the events which have unfolded, and many have likened their response to the brutal suppression of insurgents in the Paris Commune by French pro monarchy forces nearly a century ago, even going so far as to refer to the cities of Barcelona Commune. Luckily, the barbaric leftists have been crushed before their ideology can gain any more influence. But the cost of the union and healing the city may be too much to handle. A victory, at least. The fallen revolutionaries. Every few minutes, Aldolfo could hear gunshots in the distance. His city was on fire, and sandbags lined the streets below his apartment just as it was 26 years ago. The role was different then. Aldolfo had seen a great future for the Iberian proletariat, an almost sacred struggle against the fascists and monarchists who wanted to, sought to destroy the meager progress the Republic had made. But now, as the CNT once again faced off against national soldiers in the streets of Barcelona, he understood that the dream was dead. Perhaps in another world, the revolution could succeed, but not in this one. Aldolfo opened his closet, removing a small pile of clothing and the find a small latch on the bottom. He opened a secret cache, memories of decades long past, where was his Tigre Rafa, the weapon he had used in his first and only kill. A weapon he, he imagined he would use many times again, resisting Francoist domination after the fall of the Republic, but never did. He moved the rifle slightly, to reveal an old black and white photograph underneath it. There he was on the left hand of the image, a few inches shorter than the younger man with him. His fresh hair had not grown in yet, he was holding his rifle and smiling with him with four comrades, all of whom he remembered well. Raymond, who could make anyone laugh even at the worst times, shot by a sniper in January of 1939, Manuel, a brilliant student and equally brilliant fighter. Uh, told Aldolfo he was running away to France and was never heard from again. Sarah, the girl with the glasses I cannot help but imagine one day marrying, captured by the Francoist regime shortly after the war and never seen again. Asuncion. Uh, the childhood friend that had convinced Adolfo to take up arms, also captured and never seen again. What did his battles really accomplish? And what do the young revolutionaries in the streets now expect to happen? I miss you all so much. And now we're leading up to Barcelona Secure. Gunfire still sounds occasionally as the hottest zones of Barcelona, but otherwise the Iberian army and Guardia Civil seem to have control of the situation. The anarchist CNT has finally been put down at last, it seems, however. So let me raise more questions. How were they able to hold this revolt? Why did they secure so much popular support? It seems that there are many things that we must do as a nation to prevent this crisis from happening again. As the bodies are buried and the last leftist militia militants executed, the Cadugios and Iberian Council must determine a new course of action. But what is to come? Indonesia claims prisoners escaped. We've been informed that we will not be able to retrieve our prisoners. It's no matter of payment, but that they are gone. They have unfortunately mustered a breakout from the prison, according to Indonesia. They killed 27 men and wounded four more on the way out. Much to the regret of India, they've not been able to find them. Given the island to more, it is probable that they didn't make it out alive. Even if they were, they're... They are certain to have made their way off the island to a parts unknown. Worse, it's estimated that a significant portion of the former garrison have engaged in terrorist activities following the prison break. While the potential leader on the location trying to ever get them back is a distant dream. What? The aftermath. The report's going to be more clear. Hundreds of dead, thousands injured, and a city devastated. While Barcelona may have been retaken by the government forces, it's been a wake-up call. It seems clearly now that the administration hasn't done enough to fight terrorism and those that seek to destroy Iberia are getting stronger every day. Separatists and extremist terrorist groups such as the CNT, ETA, and FSLP and the BTA have been allowed to fester and grow like tumors, accumulating resources, support, and weapons while we turn a blind eye since the battle ended. Countless reports have reached the capital from all provinces about suspicious activities. If we don't do something, what will be next? The ETA seizing Bilbao? Terrorists targeting cabinet members? Madrid falling to socialists? It's clear that the government must double down on its efforts to crush a terrorism menace and do anything by in its means possible. The nation will burn before the terrorists win. Move as fast as we can. Not focused you yet, huh? Nope. Happy June, though. Happy June. Hey, we're neutral, though. We're trying to reform as much as possible, though. An emergency session, but official announcement for the government. Oh, crap. Featured in the state press on the front page of the newspaper was a darning accusation in the bold capitalized letters read, Godless foreigners kill Iberian citizens? The article itself was no less darning. Uh, far longer than the usual news article, it spared no detail on the crimes of Indonesia committed on the former garrison of Timor, which was painstakingly described by Iberian not Portuguese. Uh, the piece launched into the history and how the garrison was captured then in the defense of human decency were used as human labor for menial projects. Based on, because of the total mistreatment of the government, they died alone, far away from home, and were never seen by, by the families again. Sadly, there's no proper explanation for their mistreatment other than sheer cruelty. Also, it's topped off with a warning to never let any foreign powers take you prisoner, or else this would happen to you. It's Indonesia's fault. An emergency session. Dolores Torres was 26 years old. The loving mother of three, six-year-old Carmen, four-year-old Jose Luis, and one-year-old Maria Isabel. This morning, her husband Angel, 38 years old, attended the funerals of his wife and children. Angel lost his home, wife, many friends and neighbors, and two of his children. Ms. Serrano's father, 51-year-old Army veteran Antonio Torres, lost his brother Francisco to communist terrorism 27 years ago. And Els lost his daughter and two grandchildren to the same terrorists that plagued typical Catalonia in his youth. 
Dolores died as a hero, shooting young Maria Isabella from violence and is a martyr, the victim of an attack on a very soul of Arberia. Dolores, Carmen, and Jose Luis are far from alone. Hundreds of men, women, and children became martyrs three days ago. The next session was far quieter than, ba than any that had come before. A few counselors struggled to hold back tears as Franco lamented the tragedy that befallen Barcelona days earlier, ending his speech with a mi minute of silence. A continue bowed his head and tightly gripped the podium, his brows revealing suppressed anger. We will destroy the terrorists. The counts erupted into applause and Franco left the stage. Vacarcel. Va Valcarcel stepped up to the podium. His speech began much as Franco's had, solemn and austere, but soon shifted his focus to the matters of government policy. Counselors, who we are engaged in a struggle for the very spirit of Iberia, for the union to survive, your service is urgently needed. Cadillo, Franco, and Cadillo Salazar have ordered a new legislation to provide accentia anti separatista, the power and resources necessary to fully limit the leftist threat. Iberia cannot afford a government divided by factionalism or any language, by politics or geography. Her council must stand unified against terrorism. Even as I applauded, many counselors were deeply nervous. Never in the history of a beer had so many people been tasked with as important as a task to complete in such a short time frame. Murmurs filled the palace after a Valcarcel speech. Most counselors did not know more than two dozen other people in the chamber. Who among them would write the legislation and how could it be debated without sending the whole council into chaos? And what if the Caduceus disapprove? Don't worry. They will disapprove no matter what. We have no political power now. Barcelona burns. The battle of Barcelona will go down as a defining and tra traumatizing moment in Iberian history. Everyone remembers what they were doing when they heard Barcelona was burning. The government decision to allow TV crews to uh, follow the advancing troops and broadcast live from the front in hopes of a propaganda victory horribly backfired. Caring Iberian mothers had to cover their children's eyes when the TV showed a Leonardo da Vulture pecking the eye of a dead CNT member underneath the marble facade of the Sagrada Familia Cathedral. And the footage of a Guardia Civil Colonel executing a handcuffed militiaman became the centerpiece of heated arguments at Sunday family lunches throughout the whole union. Our citizens are starting to question if the state is really capable of protecting them. Cadillo Franco has made a reassuring speech to explain that the Barcelona uprising was a complete failure, and the Reds lost both the military and political battle, but behind closed doors, everyone in the regime knows that this Barcelona was only the beginning of the violence. Our fragile union will not be able to withstand another Barcelona, and everything in our power must be done to stop these terrorists. Mobilize the AAS. Definitive plan for reform and expansion of the AAS. Create exception ordinances permitting the AAS to release prisoners for use as informants, preemptively detain suspects without charges, perform enhanced interrogation techniques, Com commandeer local law enforcement and produce and use compromising materials against terrorism supporters, also grant their officers immunity from prosecution under Iberian law while performing their duty, allowing undercover work in terrorist organizations. Two, funding will be drastically increased and selection process for new officers shall begin immediately. The currently widespreadness of the agency is insufficient in dealing with expected terrorist threats. Recruit, three, recruit and train teams of Loyal officers from minority backgrounds and embed them as local citizens in terrorist supporting neighborhoods, use them for a full surveillance of the physical and telematic spectrum. Create the GEO, a specialized counter terrorist unit, capable of swiftly dealing with its high risk arrests, bomb threats, and hostage situations without the need for help from the army or the guardia, guaranteeing operational security. Terrorism cannot be tracked and combated by the political string and new decisions. I bear stability will depend on this. Blank check operations. A series of reforms are being made with AAS to ensure what has happened in Barcelona and Nona. Barcelona will never happen again, however. Intelligence is only the first step in our fight against terror. We'll turn the terrorist arms against them, and just as they laid uh, waste to our living, we shall lay waste to theirs. Our most loyal off AAS officers will form the GLA, Grupos Antiterroristas de Liberación. This group, primarily composed of former police officers, patriotic mercenaries, and concerned criminals, will participate in blank check operations without formal connection to the Iberian state. These brave men will carry out missions that our official state security forces cannot. The preventative neutralization of terrorist causes inside or beyond Iberian borders, the kidnapping, interrogation, or extortation of valuable members within a hierarchy of various terrorist groups, and the realization that these false flag operations against civilian targets as a form of armed propaganda to undermine sympathy for the terrorist cause, the para grandes males, grandes remedios. We didn't go. What are you talking about? The price of liberation, rather than attempt to haggle or to cut an underhanded deal. Iberia is elected to pay the full ransom price for the prisoners. In return for the generosity, we were happy to elaborate on some details that were left uncovered. It's only right for a paying customer, of course. The first was where the money would go, predictably at most, if it's going to go to transportation, since crossing half the world is never cheap. As corruption isn't entirely defeatable, a small sum must go to as a backup to ensure there is enough payment to cover the transportation. Finally, we're taking the liberty of preparing a grand stand out ceremony as they deserve. The Iberian reaction was less than enthused at the breakdown of the payment, but since the money had already been sent, there was nothing they could do. Regardless, their demeanor will certainly improve once they receive their garrison prisoners. Now they can return home. Ten more prisoners return home, which is great. This won't do very much, but it'll do at least something. Blank check operations break them. Popular music songs are loudly emanating from residential and commercial buildings alike on the outskirts of every major Iberian city. Onlookers are probably still thinking they're a bunch of rowdy teenagers, but the truth is much more sinister. Behind those walls, torture chamber chairs are being run at full steam by the AAS, who are employing exotic interrogation methods to gather as much intelligence as they can to support their next move. Every phone is being tapped, while every small hint and every anonymous tip is being followed with zeal. If a person is deemed suspicious by intelligence, he is, he is then kidnapped by the GAL, and secretly brought to these facilities, ironically named Chekas, by the agents, just like the name 
The Soviet barbarians gave his premises just like our during the Reconquista. In a few more days, our Chekhovs will have gathered enough information to enable our forces to begin the grand counter-terror offensive and nip this evil in the bud. Begin a campaign to strike back against the separatists as quickly as possible and prove our stability, but we also have this now too, because last time I did this for the first time, really. I didn't realize we had an option here too. So we have two resources. We want to strike a leadership. I think we want to kill out the CNT first, so... Um, sports 1.5, sports 1.5. It costs 2 AAS resources to perform this action due to the terrorist that increase precaution. This action will have a severely diminished effect. It takes 26 resources, my god. Propaganda. So, basically, activity determines the likelihood of an attack. Supplies determines the skill and danger of the attack. And support determines how quickly activity and supplies will grow. So I want to just do this first. I'm not sure it's worth doing that right now, but we have no resources. Which sucks. Maybe I should have saved that. I don't know. We're extremely stable still, though, which is pretty nice. Um, but, you know, we're going to break them as best we can. Accentia finds up to conceptualist activity. The acid cold frost is descended upon the tranquil little town during the early morning hours. Now, I didn't the steadfast bakers, bakers or milkmen to start their grilling shifts when the small group of black clad figures descended upon the quiet streets. Their efforts would spell a very different morning for the generally peaceful townspeople. Uh, along the stark granite walls of the police station, a mayoral office, a message of defiance was painted in a horrifying shade of red. A message to be received all around the Union. News of it quickly made up its way towards the chain of, large chain of barracks that defined the Iberian government and landed right in the hands of the security apparatus of the AAS. Ah, we have this up here too. Elsewhere, similar messages had also begun to appear, whether graffiti, sloppily designed posters, or other Ill illicit publications. One thing was certain, a wildfire had been set with opposition to the regime becoming visible on the streets and walls of Iberia. While some of them accents a little more than youthful delinquency in the propaganda, others see a dangerous movement in the natives stamping out. A small spark may bring down the whole entire house of cards. Oh crap. Well. Following the bloodbath in Barcelona, support for separatism is growing across Iberia. Militant groups are simultaneously growing in size, becoming more active with the Accentia anti separatista, uncovering an increasing amount of new terror cells across the Union. All resources necessary, material and economic, must be diverted to support the AAS in the fight against those who we want to see Iberia burn. Terrorism is combated from the political screen next to Iberia's ministries. Um, this file will be added to the national debt due to a lack of political power. Redirect military resources. Lose guns, get more. Lose manpower. Yes. We need as many resources as possible. There are special military resources to the AAS. The military will have to take some short term cuts to provide critical aid to the Accentia, remove corrupt Spanish officials in Portugal. These officials have become the greatest objects of the Portuguese. Iron must be removed. Work with the Basque religious leaders. Senators keep strong ties with Basque religious community leaders, particularly in rural areas. State job program in the Catalan cities. It is a restless view of the Catalonia to get to work. Perhaps they will be less inclined to do us harm. Correct on terrorist sympathizing academies or academics. They're discussing apologia of terrorism in our universities must be stamped out ruthlessly. Transfer and colonial anti separatist operatives. Uh, let's see, our elite anti insurgency units in North Africa are more urgently needed on the peninsula. Ramp up colonial anti terrorism measures. We can allow opportunists in the parts of Africa under, under Iberia see weakness as we face terrorism at home. Undermine foreign suspects of terror. Certain governments will support the scum of Earth to see us fail. We'll do everything in our power to stop them. Give some blood concessions to the regionalists. A few token measures could ease tensions among the border regional, broader regional populations and the command guardia civil and minority regions. There must be an unprecedented expansion of police presence in the areas where separatism is brewing. Break them. Mostly Franco line, huh? Colonial natives. Yeah, it's going to take forever to cut this down. As the total cost of both weekend and strike the leadership is 24. 43, my god. FSLP is at what? 25. 20. Oh, this would, BTA would probably have been easiest. 10 more prisoners return home. The ceremony for the Timor garrison was short but eventful, despite the press coverage of the event. The majority of the attending were relatives and family members of the retreating, or returning soldiers. Medals and arms were handed out for the expect, exceptional bravery shown by each soldier in the face of overwhelming circumstances. After long while, speeches from various politicians in the ceremony ended. Some soldiers and families lingered, talking to each other and sharing introductions to the family, and some soldiers simply left for home. The number of present diminished until eventually there were none left. Bienvenidos! Resol resolving the situation with diplomacy and money will increase the performance in the council. Ah, we still have the council here now. We improve relations uh, with uh, Salazar. Salazar.
Because my god, we, we need to pick up our, don't we? But we need Franco to lead. We're kind of screwed right now. Yes. The old and the new. The tiny cup and, uh, shook in, uh, of Kitty shook in Manuel's hands as he lifted it to his lips. The shaking hand. Uh, a shaking hand started at some point in more than 20 years of captivity and tomorrow. Maybe halfway through, but it only became noticeable for him when he held a glass and watched the liquid slosh around spilling over the rim. It took willpower and concentration to drink from his mother's tea so without making a mess, and Manuel took almost as much satisfaction from the mastering his hands as he could from the tea. Uh, yeah. The tea, the set was the same as Mother owned before he had left for Portuguese colonies. Good porcelain painting with blue glazing in the uh, style of Azulejos. It had been in most viable position back in the 30s and only brought out on special occasions. Much in the living room had not changed. The photos on the wall, the furniture, the little figurine of St. Anthony upon the cabinet. Many of the things were different, of course. His father died of bowel cancer in 1957. He had been told on the way to Lisbon. His mother was old, deeply wrinkled, and her hair struck white. His siblings were now about as old as his parents were when he had left. The change that he expected to be the most dramatic was the fact that his country no longer existed, except it did, in a sense, and he felt no great difference living in Iberia than he had in Portugal. Homes had TV sets, and the cars and clothes were all strange to him, but in the end he was drinking tea from the same tea set, under the same roof, in the same city, with the same streets. It felt as if the place and the people he once knew had been replaced and were not pretending to be as Portugal. Manuel knew it was silly, but the feeling it could not be erased any more than he could stop his hands from shaking. Everything is the same, and yet everything is different. Just like the deficit, and the inflation, and Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, save our souls. Break them. By baton. If they can be neutered quickly, perhaps we can prevent more uh, terror, more horror. The radio. By baton. After weeks of planning, investigation, and analysis, we can finally strike back at the terrorist threat. Using information gathered from informants, check us in wiretaps. The AAS has identified hundreds of key terrorist elements and is ready to execute mass arrests and on command. On the dead of the night, the Fangelas anthem, Cara del Sol, will be played on the radio stations throughout the country. If the signals start the arrest, GAL operatives will take care of the most dangerous targets, while the lesser risk warrants will be served by the AAS officers. The move will sh uh, show them that this land is ours and will wipe clean their skirts as solid peaceful Iberia. And a car bombing in Porto. Oh, crap. Oh. Resources available. Commuters and pedestrians in downtown Porto were given a nasty surprise earlier today when a car bombed dead in the corner of two busy roads, surrounded by crowds of people. Though uh, anti separatist units were tipped off to the threat, they unfortunately arrived just a few minutes too late and saw the informant story corroborated by a column of smoke rising a few blocks away from the location. Fifteen fatalities have been reported, as well as dozens of injured in the hospitals uh, and following the aftermath of the attack. Anti separatist units vowed to investigate as soon as possible, but as it turns out, this was not needed. Within hours of the attack, a spokesperson from the FLSP, speaking in a distorted voice over the radio, took credit for the ter act of terrorism. The nationals have vowed that these attacks will increase in magnitude as long as Portugal remains under Spanish yoke. The AAS will put these murders, murders down. 22 is not bad. 28 is a lot. 47 is a lot. Uh, maybe I should have done this group first. VTA might be best to do, because you can get rid of one, at least, right? If you get rid of one, that should be really good, right? Because I really want to kill all the CNT. Maybe I'll just try to get rid of these guys first. Oopsie. Oh. Two, huh? But we'll see by baton, because we have no resources now. We're playing the political power, though. We can do this and stuff as well, but it's going to hurt everyone's opinion of Franco. To increase the NTA support would be nice. A trial. The trial of the century will be hosted in Madrid with two dozens of the vilest terrorists on the planet standing in front of the Supreme Court at a special national security session. More than 150 witnesses, encompassing government officials, bombing victims, and the so called Sopilones. Terrorists turn ghosts, which cover their faces and testify against their former comrades in exchange for immunity. We will given, uh, we'll be ready to give the testimony on the prosecution side. News outlets from all of Europe and beyond will be covering the event, including a team from New York Times, led by fame reporter Hannah Ardent. Uh, Ardent. Cameras will be placed around the pulpit, transmitting a full session with live commentary from loyal journalists. The defense will be held in a soundproof glass cage in the middle of the courthouse, responding to their questions with using a microphone which can be muted if the plaintiff tries to use a trial as a soapbox. Most of the suspects will be sentenced to life imprisonment, and the worst of them all have been given capital punishment, with a show of force will aim to deter further terrorist attacks. Basque teenagers caught vandalizing. News of another display of separatist activity have been relayed internally by the Alexensia. A pair of rebellious youths had the, had the audacity to attack the Bilbao AAS branch offices with rocks and other small missiles, while chanting freedom messages, in the process of smashing multiple windows and allegedly even causing minor wounds to the female secretary. Teenagers both believed to be the age of 14 were immediately apprehended at the scene to be taken in for further questioning. The precedent that this attack could set for more daring dissatisfied separatists is yet to be seen. Disgraceful display of our education system and by radio. 
A car bomb went off in an all-girls Sacred Heart school in Babal, murdering 19 schoolgirls who were playing in the yard and wounding many more. Forensic experts quickly analyzed the scene and discovered that the explosive used was a famous Goma 2 ETA's signature weapon. The nightly news was fully dedicated to the bombing, interspersing footage from the victims with the image of Doña uh, Maria del Carmen and Caudillo Franco's lovely wife crying when she received the terrible tidings. The closing segment depicted two men in the white masks in front of the Acornia flag reading a statement. The ruling class has refused to socialize their power and wealth, and because of their avarice and their short sightedness, the ETA is beholden to socialize suffering. On the next day, uh, vigils honoring the dead children were spontaneously made throughout our whole union, even the Basque neighborhoods, and many mourners chanted Asesinos, Asesinos. A photograph taken by El Correro of a Guardia Civil hugging a wounded schoolgirl touching the world and was even nominated for the Pulitzer Prize. Pulitzer Prize. Well, this operation we scored our first major propaganda coup against the terrorists. We need to keep up with these activities to uh, further erode the enemy's support of the The afternoon yet calm, police chief slowly descended down the cracked uh, stone slab of the station with the nearly, nearly, nearing step to the Grand Oak entrance doors, increasing the blasting cacophony of voices and screams outside. With a quick pause and steady breath, he opened them to unwelcoming flash of ca harsh camera flashes. And unintelligible questions. Raising his hand to try to soften the din, he well went over the me message he had relay again, already gritting his teeth in anticipation of what was to follow. The tragic death of the two youths had vandalized the AAS station in Bilbao, only to be arrested immediately on the scene was a travesty. Local police had been due to transfer the delinquents into a custody to await the trial, only to find both had died under mysterious circumstances while being detained by the AAS agents. Without having the full consequences and consideration, the transferring officers had contacted the family of their deceased soon after. If word about this incident spreads, the initial ripples have the potential of turning into a full shock waves, ready to incite social devastation upon the already teetering union. You fools, right, what have you done? Bow. The lazy summer sun warmed the already cracking roof tiles of a town in total uproar, creating an almost amazing contrast to the chaos on the streets of Bilbao. Large mobs are gathered with numerous protesters and signs decrying the supposed injustice committed against the two recently deceased youths and their families. An angry march taking them right into the arms of waiting riot police, who had seemingly, seemingly had little sympathy with protesters while they quickly dismantled the gathering. Numerous ringleaders and those who resisted were already uh, arrested without delay, likely not helping a situation that was already beginning to influence the national consciousness. Order must be restored. That's not good. Also, off screen, like, we did get two t teenagers that did, like, the graffiti stuff, they died somehow, so. Uh, it was probably all Burgundy's fault, so. I don't want to do any more of these, because I don't want to worsen the opinion of Franco, because we really do need Franco. Um, so. Uh, Anti-separatist stuff, so more than 5,000 guns. Um, well, we're going to be line for guns. We, we need more trucks. We're going to have anti-tank stuff here, too, anyways. Uh, here's this, too. There we go. Get more guns. How many do we not have? We have 2,700 in the reserve, which is pretty good. But we're doing by trial as well. Um, if you want to do this again, please go ahead. But, you know, it is what it is. And, of course, I read radio earlier, too. So there's that one, too. Ta -da. But let's keep going. And happy September, everybody. Alright, before I started recording this again, some spicy food. Oh, God. Spicy garlic sauce. Oh. Oh, that's good. This one. But more factory output. End of this. Really? End. Oh, we lost. Oh, that's not good. Oh, my God. Good time. Oh, we still own this. Ooh, total defeat in South Africa. Ooh, that's not good. If you want to read about that one, please go to hell. But I've got to do some funky stuff here to make sure that we don't all die. Um, or we don't get this, because this is very, very, very bad for us. Um, even though it does worsen the military's opinion and solid majority's opinion of Salazar, which is, in itself, not hey, a bad thing. infiltrates a large CNC cell. To say that she looked shifty was an understatement. Quite frankly, her whole body felt oddly out of place when walking down the shoddily wooden stairs of this hidden, hidden cellar entrance. Letting her eyes flit momentarily under a guy just behind her, she was again taken back by how innocent and normal these people looked. He could have maybe been a school teacher. Like, actually, he was. Academia was starting to be filled with these people. The pair stopped at the heavy doors, blocking the view of what sounded like a relatively large meeting room. R larger than what you'd expect to find under a regular storefront. Without further thought, the undercover AAS agent let herself in. With this extremely for fortunate infiltration of a large anarchist CNT terrorist group, the government security agency has been able to finally map out further plans of revolt and also gain insight into their high morale. With the period of victory of government forces, it should come as no surprise that the rebels feel emboldened in future action. The movements will continue to be monitored. monitored. A lucky catch. Which sucks for us, but now we can destroy the BTA, which I'm not sure if it's good to just destroy every single group as fast as we can, because I don't remember, I'll be honest. Uh, hopefully we can, but... Not vulnerable enough for us. It's not possible to destroy the BTA as a total cost of both weakening them and strike the leadership at 16 resources, which we do have. So.
will strike at the BTA leadership and hunt down the remnants of the organization. Put an end to the terror. Cost five resources. So should get rid of them. Let's hope those. As we are doing by radio as well, everything's under control. Once more to the breach, look at that. It's been uh, roughly 30 years since the original us. Historian communist movement was crushed by Franco and the Foreign Legion, but the embers of the revolution still burn. It was those embers which eventually sparked a raging fire engulfing the forests and hills of Asturias in an unending campaign of terror. That era is now over, however. Bitter old miners and workers are no match for our brave AAS agents. After months upon months of sweeping the land, we can safely say that the BTA is no longer a substantial threat. Sympathizers and isolated cells may remain, but this should be the end of them as a cohesive and effective organization. Now they are free from both communist propaganda and threats of violence. Just perhaps the mines and factories of the North can return to their usual level of productivity. The birthplace of modern Spain shall prosper in a safety once more. Two communist rebellions is quite enough. Awesome. Everything's under control. Everything. It will be alright in Iberia. Our workers toil away in the offices and factories, safe and assured in the knowledge that the state is there to protect them from the terrorists. Their sons and daughters sit happily at the school desks, and the guards sit outside the school gates there to keep them safe. The vejitos enjoy the warm weather, sitting placidly about, par about park benches, watching the birds sing and no longer think about Barcelona. And above all, uh, perched on every lamppost, the roaming eyes of the AAS watch them, ready to call upon the gentle hand of the Guardia Civil at the first sense of trouble. The events of Barcelona have put fear into the hearts of many Iberians, but it's time to move on from worrying about the phantom of terrorism. Iberia is safe and secure and locked tightly and lovingly in the hands of adored Cadillos. We've done all that we can for now. Council members are beginning to draft domestic reforms to improve life in Iberia and the White Terror. Furious snuck in the door alerted Jean Josep to his feet. The old man pleaded with visitors as they threatened to break in, hobbling in as quickly as his joints would allow. He opened the door and six military men, all armed in armor, bursted into the home, quickly scanned the rooms to find any other people. Uh... Though what is the meaning of this? John Joseph demanded. Sit down, now do as I say, said the officer as he pointed his rifle directly at the old man. Uh, John Joseph complied, sitting down, filling the wheelchair. Don, come, come, a lad, is it? The officer relaxed his arm, letting his rifle point towards the door. Is anyone else in this building? No, sir. Don, come, a lad, we have reason to believe that you're, you or someone else in this building is involved with an arms smuggling operation for the CNT. I just need to ask you a few questions. Is there anyone else who lives here with you? No, my wife passed away three years ago. Do you possess any weapons? <clears throat> Uh, no, never once. Thank you for cooperation, Don Comelad. I'll sit here with you while the agency conducts some research. We will be done, of course, very soon. And we're very stable still. Uh, Jean Joseph had a third of things like this happening to us before. Innocent people whose homes were stormed by the AAS. But Jean Joseph was not innocent. He knew it. The souls of those nationals he gunned down in the trenches of Ergon 29 years ago knew it too. Surely he had nothing in his house from those old days. Surely the AAS would not find anything. Surely he would be safe. Minutes felt like hours, and the agents watching over Jean Joseph, offering only the heartless gaze of, of the what terror. But did not die that day. Thank you, Mr. Kamilad. Apologies for the interruption. Go on with your business. The agent stood up, of course. Um, along with the other agents, wordlessly left. The agent just sat still petrified. The white terror is back, or perhaps it never ended. We get no benefit to getting rid of the, the, at least some terrorists come. Also, I'm, I'm making sure these guys are winning down here, too. Broken house. With each waking second, the Spectre could feel a dark, dark bag under his eyes weigh him down even more and more, as they had been attached. Uh, uh, to invisible weights, staring up blankly, he noticed his trusty desk lamp was faring no better than him. The three dead bulbs tumbling underneath him already had varying layers of dust collecting on them. Sighing, he leaned back to fully take in the chaos in front of him. The case paper seemed to have multiplied exponentially with his investigative work since the dismissal, yet the solution was no closer, and it was all infuriating him to no end. Looking at the photo of the missing heiress, he felt sudden, a sudden chill as he imagined her calling out his name. He squinted hard at the picture, only to notice the calls that come from behind him. His wife was in the doorway with a face of stone. Tick. Giving her sparsely any attention, he turned back to his work. Tick. They could hear the thudding steps as she was coming closer, accusing him of every step. Tick. It didn't sound real. His body felt so light he could have been going to float. Tick. And as she drew nearer, he began to make out the harsh words that were spewing from her rightfully contorted face. Tick. And another anger began to wash over the inspector. First the case, then the work incident, and now finally his wife. It seemed like nothing was willing to give him a break. Tick. As she grabbed his shoulder, he turned towards her with an expression of utter madness. Boom. The smack was sudden without mercy. The inspector's wife stepping back and reeling and clutching her reddened cheek with a look of abject horror on her face. Suddenly the world came back into focus, and the inspector looked at his hand in disbelief as if it was a foreign body entirely alien to him. Across the room, now treating slowly away from him, the same look was mirrored back, and it was not directed at his hand but at the whole being. A quiet apology slipped loosely out of the inspector's mouth, but as soon as it departed from his lips, he knew it would not be enough. He turned back to his work as the door to his study slammed shut. Not long, under, not long after he heard the door finally close, the case paper still lay on his desk. Will they save me? Read right on the Constitution. It's hard to imagine the Battle of Barcelona coming at a less convenient time if it makes sense to say that there's a convenient time for such a tragedy at all. The Iberian Council is still young, its members and experience, and the powers and limitations of the new legislature are not entirely clear. Nonetheless, the Council prevailed through this first crisis, quickly drafting and passing legislation to better combat terrorists wherever they were to be found. The Iberian Council has been tested and has passed its test. Few still doubt that the new legislature could solve at least some of the problems facing the Union. Perhaps then, it's no surprise that mere weeks after the Barcelona and several members of the Council's Reformist faction have launched initiatives to overhaul the various elements of the Iberian legal system and government policy. 
the Alastres plan and the Fernandez Miranda plan, as they are uh, informally known, have gained significant traction within the legislature. Both plans are several hundred pages long, composed by the dozens of authors, and advocate ad uh, radical transformations to uh, Iberian law and fiscal policy. The Alastres plan focused on centralizing the government, rationalizing the administrative structure, and eliminating, eliminating corruption, while the Fernandez Miranda plan is focused on expanding social welfare, clarifying the definition of rights given assistance, thereby ensuring the loyalty of the Iberian people. The reform factions all but unanimous in their support for both plans, and though no hard numbers are available, it's thought that somewhere between 30 to 40 percent of conservatives generally favor the plans as well. They've been the backing of both Cadillos and Manuel Fraga, a man respected by the councils, the reformists, and conservatives. As emerges, a loud advocate for the program. With such a broad coalition of support, there's no question that these plans represent the future of the Iberian government. However, the current plans are rough drafts, sorely lacking in specifics, and seeing them transform into actual policies take months, if not years, of effort. We certainly have our work cut out for us. It's a little lagging in 1965. Yes, October. Yes, yes. Ah, Indonesia has fallen apart. What is this? Disbanded. That's good. We have a lot of support here. 4.37. Well, it went down by one, which is nice. Might be focused on the ETA next. I don't know. We'll see. No focus yet, though, which is kind of sad, but whatever. I guess we're a little bit ahead of time. Um, I guess we do it down here. We just need more guns. So that's what we're working on. Bombing in Madrid kills 18 and injures 882. 82. In about 22.30 this evening, a massive bomb exploded in the El Descanto de las Casas de la Cotillas restaurant in Madrid, causing a three-story building housing the restaurant to collapse. The building crashed down about 200 diners and employees present in the restaurant, killing 18 people and injuring 82. Fifteen servicemen of the nearby Torrejon Air Base was among the injured while, while being frequented by the airbase staff at the time, and the bomb occurred a few, in an hour few airmen typically were present. The police investigation concluded that the explosion was caused by a 13 pound chloractite bomb planted near the bathroom of the restaurant, consisting of a chemical mixture made up of potassium chloride, um, chlorate and sulfur, a type of explosive said to be rarely used by domestic Spanish terrorist groups. Nonetheless, the ETA Basque separatist attack or group has claimed responsibility for the attack. Do they have no shame? How many families did they torn apart over this petty squirrel? Squirrel? Squirrel. The Iberian Council assembles. Why do we get more debt now, too? The streets of downtown Madrid are roared alive with those great halls of the Iberian Council packed with brim, with legislative legislatures with plans to improve the lives of everyday citizens, and resolve the larger issues facing the Union. Every man among the crowd eager to wait on the complex discussions anticipated for this assembly of the Iberian Council. Political blocks from across the Union, both great and small, have ensured that their representation within the assembly will be at absolute maximum. It's time for this landmark assembly the Iberian Council to commence. The assembly opens with the usual legislative formalities, and a quorum is called without a hitch. Shortly thereafter, the Cadillus make their appearance in an awkward tandem as they address the council. Two leaders engage the council with talk-talk, talk, tall talk of prosperity and national greatness. The general reception of the speeches, however, garners a little more than subdued applause, following several ungainly speeches. Sharing nearly equally between Franco and Salazar, the two leaders jointly call the deliberations of the council to an open. Let it begin. Extraordinary council meeting. Finally, the so-called Battle of Barcelona has reached its conclusion. The separatists lay dead or under arrest, demonstrating, without a doubt, the ability of the armed forces to quell rebellion. However, there's something else occurring. The Caldeos are worried, not because of the battle itself, but because of the idea that it could have happened at all. If something this large was able to slip under their noses, what else could have been? Or have? They don't ask for the grip they used to maintain, for the sake of the union that that must be rectified. In order to get to do that, however, they must know where to start. That is why an extraordinary meeting of the council will be called so that a decision may be made on how to fix this mess. Nice. Up to the Constitution. It's an undisputable fact that by anyone understands reality that things change, the world is not fixed, and one of God's favorite pastimes is striking down those arrogant enough to presume it is. We must not be counted among the fools who are caught unawares, but the tides of change so sure that things will stay as they always have. Therefore, the best way to reassert our control is to change with the times. The Constitution may, must be updated, with brand new provisions and revisions designed to allow us more power. Additionally, it will very likely be a very good idea to make sure that the people themselves are content, since if they see that they are cared for, we will be, they will be less inclined towards rebellious thought. The world, the way the state works, rights and obligations of the people. Um, low pensions, moderate pensions, more cost. Oof. Better political power, taxation, and poor modifier. Oh God. Collaborate with each other. A contempt people. Judicial issues. Admin efficiency is not bad too. Rights and obligations of the Iberians. Uh, one of the most important parts of the Constitution is how it addresses the citizens of Iberia, within the provisions that lays out the definition of an Iberian citizen. As obvious as that may seem, the programs which are assigned to provide welfare and they are where they are present. It also lists what they are obligated to do as Iberians. Collectively, these provisions are known as the rights and obligations of an Iberian citizen. And as any state worth existing must care for its people, we must do the same. We will now begin to draft the changes relating to the rights and obligations as to make sure people are happy, provided for, and are always aware of both who they are and what they must do. Ah. Uh, 
manpower and guns, but get more resources. We have only one. Not good. I'll probably get with the ETA. Regional crackdown. Because right now we're just trying to beeline to get as many guns as possible. I'm not doing any of this stuff too. Moves corrupt Spanish officials in Portugal. Huh. Stuff's going on down there. Up with the times. You called me for a meeting at this ungodly hour. Salazar asked her the phone and only took a glimpse out of the window to tell at the time. As the only illuminating the dark skies of the, either city, where are the streetlights of Madrid and Lisbon? What's so urgent that you cannot wait another ten or so hours? A scuffle at Barcelona has me worried, Franco sighed, wiping his forehead with a hand. It's going to happen again. I know these rat dudes, separatists, better than you, and I know them well enough to tell you that this won't be the end of it. You think we can survive another Barcelona? I don't think so, Antonio. When you update the Constitution, I'll the people something that will calm things down for a while. Franco just kept speaking, only stopping to catch breath, but Antonio, we need to be a united front of this. We can't show disunity on this question. Francisco, what are you on about? Salazar asked. Wasn't it enough that we created the Iberian Council? Now you want to give them more concessions? Tell me, Franco responded, his tone growing agitated. Would you rather this union fall apart? Do you want the consequences? If you, this peninsula melts around us, you know what would happen. We have to do something before it's too late. Help me out here. It's, all your, it's for your own sake. Darn you, Franco, I just want to go to sleep. I don't want any more cost. Perhaps a little poverty, too, which is nice. Uh, Maslow's Basics. There's an American psychologist by the name of Abraham Maslow. He's created a very interesting contribution to the field of a pyramid of sorts. Specifically, a pyramid of needs. Maslow detains what a person requires for each of their needs, and as each is fulfilled, they move to a higher level of the pyramid. The first level of the pyramid is the basic physical needs, namely food, water, and shelter. It's important to keep the people of Hiberia happy. As for a satisfied worker, is a productive worker. If we were to follow this pyramid, then the best way to make our citizens happy is to make sure the basic level is satisfied. We must make sure that they are tended to, and then that they may remain happy and productive. Or goods of Guinea. As a choice between 10 years of prison or 5 years in the cashew orchards, food is more expensive these days, and Umaro was not about to let his family starve, even if it was forced to him to commit to th thievery. Alas, the rice seller alerted an officer whom Umaro had not seen, and Umaro tried to flee, twilling the kilograms of stolen rice weighed down on him. His wife and his children had to join him in the orchard. If they refused, how will they eat? Let a on now. All the four years old gathered cashew fruits that had fallen to the ground alongside the seven year old sister Dua. Umaro and his wife, Jam Abba, set of the shelling station, shammering the cashew shells exposed to the nuts within. Dust entered Jan Abba's lungs, and she struggled to breathe as the particles of toxin resin lodged itself in her wine pipe. Umaro's left hand was blistered from the resin, his hot glove having partially torn and needing to work another 40 hours to purchase a new one. The lodging was paltry at best, blankets sprawled over the concrete floor. Each man, woman, and child packed side by side. Bathing consisted of being stripped naked in a line outdoors and sprayed down with hoses. It was even worse, a bowl of rice twice a day. On Sundays, foo foo, bland and unflavored. A tablespoon of peanut sauce or pepper sauce could be purchased for 10 hours of work, but with frequent fines, most could not help to pour this more than once a week. The punishments were cruel and frequent on these long 12 hour shifts, move too slowly or too sloppily, and can be canned by the overseer's baton or be fined for many hours of work. Or hours of pay. Try to rest for a second, but risk being shocked by cattle prod. Many of the workers had scars on their faces, necks, and limbs. Women are typically scarred in other ways. The more creative overseers are even collected resin and paint the skins of those punished, such as that blistered would form into the patterns and shapes. These were the facts of life in the Orchard of Guinea. A bag of rice. All for a bag of rice. A single bag of rice, you know. I mean, I'd love to do this. That's a crap ton of deficit, though, but we can't afford that. Debt servicing. Like, how do we get more money? I'm not sure if we really can. Colonial citizenship? <clears throat> or the way the world state works. The Iberian state has been a relatively functional institution for nearly two decades. Given the government operates, it's more of a miracle than an accomplishment. We've not collapsed into anarchy or seen the Union surrendered yet, but that's more of a result of dumb luck than our own incompetence. Who would want a country to run like this? We need to give the administrators a good hard look. We need to cut the slack, fix the problems, and strain out deeply corrupt government. Right now, it's no wonder there was a battle of Barcelona. We were lucky, in fact, that something like this had not happened sooner. It's time for something more serious. Structural reforms, starting with the Constitution. What matters is to the people. Finally, the government was ready to discuss. It was not the entire government, of course. It was a council, representatives from several government agencies and the Caldillos themselves. Remarkably, the entire council was present, which was the first time, uh, uh, first uh, issue the convention met. There's not enough seats for everyone. The convention solved its first issue in approximately three minutes with a couple of folding chairs. The first real problem of the convention was where to start. They had a whole constitution to revise after all, and even though they would reach all of it, they would not get it all done at once, of course, since we were bickering and shoot and sued. Following an eternity of arguments over petty and ultimately meaningless issues, Salazar put his foot down and ordered them to start from the top. Basic needs. Let's get on with it. Smugglers detained in an Astorian port. Local authorities of the port of Alvides discovered a cargo ship had secretly 
had a secret compartment banned as normal transport of goods, holding a variety of small arms and ammo. But the social tension is currently very high, anyhow, due to the separatist tensions, this discovery may even have sparked enough controversy that led to lead the Union on a long descent towards downwards in the Civil War. We therefore had to sort of the situation with minimal press coverage and the wider government interference. It is, however, unknown. Where this transport had originally come from, which opens entirely new questions as well. The Breton crew, which we had questioned extensively, gave us no further information except for background contacts and intermediaries, intermediaries, which look to lead nowhere. Perhaps the mystery will never solve. We find ourselves in dangerous waters. Regime's families, a judicial question. Or some secure debt social. The entire government does not handle the affairs of needs and wants. We have to have special provision set aside for that pair, along with an appropriately named department, the Seguridad Social. This program is a pride and joy of the government, not just for its value of public relations, but for its track record. No other government has been has such a spotless record, full of bureaucrats who seemingly should care for the people for, uh, for their bl special blend of paperwork. Oh, god dang it. Even though it processes everything such a program could desire, Health care and pensions, among many more, is this flaw. The Secure Debt Social Program has fallen behind in recent years due to its relative non importance towards other factors. Some of the legislation dates back to the 40s, with only minor corrections performed. We must update it for the 60s so that it may fit the needs of a modern day society. Car bomb below parking lot and parcel and kills, 100 fi kills 15, not 115, but 15. State of the Council, where are we at? 45. A car bomb was just detonated in the middle of Barcelona by the anarchist separatist group, the CNT, the Galeras Preciados, the department store on the Casa Joba. The bombing killed 15 people and injured 45. The attack occurred on Friday afternoon. The car bomb hit in the boot of a seat 850. It had been placed on the first floor of the three-story, a state-of-the-art subterranean car park below the commercial center. At approximately 1612, a timer activated the bomb, which exploded, destroying 20 vehicles parked nearby, and causing a hole of around 5 meters in diameter on the ground floor of the shopping center, through which a huge ball of flame had penetrated. Several of those unaffected by the flames were asphyxiated by the toxic gases produced, causing several fatalities. The damage to the scene was so extensive that several of the corpses could not be located until two hours later, and some had been burned so severely that identification had been impossibilitated. impossibilitated. As of now, 15 people have been killed, 10 of them women, one of whom was pregnant, and two children and three men. CMT has claimed the attack. Oh my god. They're still extremely stable, though. Alright, so I want you to take 56 resources, 44 resources, 36. Well, maybe this one would be best to take out. FSLP next. You know, these are very high. Now we'll do that one way. I'll screw it. It's not great, but we have to do what we have to do here. Nope, my apologies out of my phone. Did you hear that? The matter of state. The Constitution debate has reached a new stage. The Council now faces the question of how to perform the function of the state. Even though no major change will be made for sure, there are some matters that need to be configured to maximize efficiency. Not everything that needs changing, and it will be the duty of the Council to debate on what exactly needs to be done. Privately, the representatives assembled seem to uh, generally dread. The idea of discussion on the dire keep the Iberia's protectors seemed prepared what they, to do what they must do. Here we go. Here we go. Oh god. Oh god. What is this? We need more guns. We always need more guns, but happy January 1966, everybody. Spain is pain. My oh, god. 45 guns a day is not enough. They're still extremely stable, though. Thirty-two resources. How do we get even more? Huh. Reform it. Colonial citizenship. Well, it may seem that Iberian citizenship is a very simple thing. It is not, however. The definition of a citizen is very simple. If a parent is an Iberian citizen, then the child will be an Iberian citizen. Location does not matter, nor the parent, only that one is really a citizen. A new question has come up recently as a potential addendum to this rule. Natives from our African holdings do not count as citizens, therefore. They have limited rights and they are not eligible for many private privileges that a regular citizen would have. A political movement around this has grown as a few politicians argue that the natives should be granted citizenship. They find that since they live in part of Iberia, they should be treated as Iberians, or at least given some form of limited citizenship. We must carefully consider this question, of course. We are 45 still. So even doing that one didn't do anything for us here, so. Matske. Remove, we uh, lack resource political power, so get that. Up here. Two more guns, man. I don't want to delete divisions and stuff like that, but still. 
Question. Oh, man, so this theory is food. A politician taps a finger on his nose, eventually settling and running his finger along the papers he read it aloud. According to the psychologist Maslow, the uh, pyramid, his pyramid of needs, posits that the hierarchy of needs. Bones, it's logic, the only way to get a happy, productive citizen is to make sure these, these needs are fulfilled. His voice is loud. Oh, look at that. But monotone. He clearly wants people to hear, although he doesn't seem to be very himself. As I'm sure you all know, everyone needs to eat. Hunger goes on, even when you can't stop it. I do not know anyone who cannot provide for themselves, but I'm certain they exist. So my partner would like to present... He looked expectantly towards another politician who starts speaking on a cue. I'd like to propose something to help people get the food they need, so they aren't left in the dust. A specially dedicated currency to be given up to anyone in the country that needs it. They can spend this on whatever food they like, provided it's food and not a luxury. They hauled it up with speech, though eventually the Alexandria representative spoke loud enough to be heard by all. Why would we need this? You know about the auxilio social, right? It's already that does that duty for us. What's the point of bloating the state for a function that, is, that we don't need? Eventually, the Kazoos came to the final word of the matter. Would there be a new food program or not? It would exist. Who sounds for people? Certain people could help. Collaborate with each other. One of the most fundamental and one of the most flawed ideas of Bolshevism is the idea of class struggle. They will put the wealthy against the poor, dividing mankind among rabbit, uh, arbitrary lines because of the words of some dusty manuscript. For our beers of stability, we cannot allow anything of the sort to come to exist. The best way to discourage the idea is to ensure the opposite in the Constitution. We must explicitly denounce class struggle for what it is, pointless division and conflict. Every class must recall that they are Iberians and that in the end they are the same country, and so share a common destiny. We must collaborate with one another so that the state works as well as possible. What is this? An army fights against the ETA due to the critical situation in the Basque country. The army is standing by for full assault against ETA. The defense will decrease activity supplies and support by four, but not lower than two. Lower stability by one. While this reduces Iberia's stability in the short term, it might save Iberia in the long term. Oh, heck yeah. Muscle theories, th things we won't debate. There are several other matters within the hierarchy of needs, such as sleep and reproduction, but man shrug. There's nothing we can do about those. Let's move on. Nobody disagreed. That seems pretty self explanatory. Uh, water. Still in South Africa. Okay, what the heck? I'm sick of this. Why? No, they just pieced out. No, no, they just pieced out randomly. I'm not doing that. As well as the South Africa girl, if you want to read this, please go ahead. I'm not going to do that one. Uh, that's what's theory. Water. Water, nothing on this earth is more important than water. No man could deny that without water, and I see some of you bottles of it now would be dead as well as a graveyard. The man continues, as important as the water is, the cleanliness is also important in that water. Drinking filth will do nothing but make you sick at best. Without access to water more than that, what they strictly need and clean, you cannot expect to have a health, happy, productive citizens. The man clears the throat. We need to make sure the water is clean. Some areas of our beer have been left behind. They do not have clean water. I have some water regulations here, and if we assert them, then the clean water would not be an issue. Another councilman objected his voice. Uh, high but steady. That seems very nice, but not necessary. Have you seen the news? We haven't had any cases of water poisoning or anything like that, uh, or cholera or any other ailment that stems from back water. But we do, well, we don't need to waste a lot of budget on measuring a pipe down to the first three drops, so through it, it'll be fine as is. The debate continued on for much longer than the ones before. After a while, it was time for everyone to decide who made a better point. They concluded that establishing regulations would be better and beneficial. Nice, protecting the people makes reforms them stronger. Poverty began to improve. Nice. And we'll talk about shelter too. In an episode. Oh, we successfully raided a CNT cell. Look at that. Across the innocent looking at shore, up, uh, shore front, up high on the roof of a secure apartment block, lay a dormant sniper. His scope rested on the entrance of the cl closed store. In the darkness of the chilly summer night, he could make out the shadowy figures of his comrades making their way silently to all the possible entrances and exits of the terrorist hideout they had discovered. Finally, the cell's given, he's watching them storm in, hearing those faint noises of panic shouting mixed in with a few sound shots with the radio across the street. After five minutes, the street went silent again. Successful AAS raid on the earlier infiltrated CNT terrorist cell had brought the great spoils, both in terms of information obtained after interrogation and material loot. The anarchists had amassed a good amount of material for their plan attack on a union. The victory would be forgotten by history as a sacrifice of equally keeping the devastation that could have been perpetrated by a more of important books. A swift yet groundbreaking victory for our security forces. Shelter. Then there is finally the matter of shelter. Everyone needs a roof over their heads, or they'll live short, miserable lives. I have nothing to say about this, so I'll have a colleague take their position. A man goes silent as another speaks in a move that was painfully, obviously coordinated. It's critical that we make sure all Iberians have housing. Not everyone has a house, and some lack the means to gain one. Even worse, some do, but they live in squalor and filth. It is true that we provide housing already, but our programs are not sufficient. I will propose intervention into the housing market, with the specifics to be worked out later. It's our duty to make sure the people of Iberia do not want when, when we can provide. But we can't provide, can we? We'll respond to another councilman. For all the comprehensive programs you and your bunch keep proposing, you'll never seem to stop and consider the budget. Well, we're going to consider the budget here. The army needs funding, or we'll dissolve it from separatism. All these minor issues we need funding, or we'll dissolve it because you all can think about how to spend every penny we don't have. With a side, Franco called off both. He knew nothing was going to come out of this conversation beyond what has already been said. Now, both wanted to settle the argument. Government housing is already granted. Liberal conservatism, huh? Well, I, we want to go that way. Various liberals. Liberal conservatism is caliber, which I didn't get last time. Even though, get Opus Dow would be very cool. We must participate in the real estate market. 
Expand reformism. Nice. More liberalism, huh? Collaborate with each other. Yeah, that's good. A good one to do. Collaborate with the state. It's very important that certain values are instilled into the population. There's, they are not an ideology, and in the fact that they are far from it, every good state has a good culture, and with the sort of which must be carefully cultivated. While it's difficult to introduce these values at a mass scale, an important step towards a certain outcome will be to emphasize them in the Constitution. First and foremost, parties with significant disputes should not turn to violence. We must pound this into their heads at every turn to prevent another battle of Barcelona. We encourage these groups to work with the state rather than fight. After all, it's much easier to create change within the system rather than trying to overturn it. So we, too, and we get more political power from this one, too. So. Increases taxation income. Oh my god. Why would we ever want that? But the colon question of colonial citizenship. A growing movement in the Congress to finally find itself sufficient support to debate colonial co citizenship. Iberian. Citizenship is granted automatically to anyone who is apparently with Iberian citizenship. At face value, it is simply a, a simple policy. However, it becomes significantly more complicated than once one factors in the other processes, such as colonial residents. The natives are considered non Iberian and denied citizenship. Effectively, they are denied any sort of benefits one would gain from citizenship. A clique in the Congress has argued against this policy for several reasons. Some find it unjust to deny native citizenship, since they lived on the land before settlers and others opposed it for more practical reasons. This is to create a collaborative group within the native populations with, with which to sabotage the others or simply to ease administrative strain. The end result is the same to give all African natives Iberian citizenship. The this argument experienced significant pushback as an understatement. Opposition has been fierce, with a great many wishing to maintain the status quo. The settler groups wish to, the situ to keep the situation as it is, as the current laws work for very favorably for the Iberian settlers, ultimately it's up to, to the Cadillos. Anyone born within our borders is Iberian. Strength and reformism. Social levels are strengthened by this change. Citizenship is very complex. But, we're going to end the episode here. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Because I'm going to have to redo some of this, because I want to make sure we at least we are okay. Subscribe if you're new. Oh my god, that yearly deficit's really bad. And I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on with our whole Iberian journey under this Franco guy. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.